Canada. Canada. Pull this one. Get the grind on the end. Go off on them and watch all them things. Yeah, and get that stupid. I'm gonna try and get a space inside here. Inside your own walking, I got a lot of people. Excuse, excuse. Excuse. See the bag and chair. Well, the corner. Yeah, that's it.
sometimes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm going to go back up here, sir. Here we go. Come in front. So, anyway, the room is like, I believe in the room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's a ninja. He's a ninja. And you can see, they got the guides for now. Yeah, you can see the guides. You can call my name and talk to my manager. Yeah, you can call me. I know that I'm a programmer. I don't know it's not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, see me? I see me. Look at 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 me.
me in the spirit at time. I was not prepared to give this at such an early stage in life. I was given a short period of time to relate to you a whole lifetime words of my dad's life. However, I'm going to try my best to give you all who didn't know him this side of a, this, the, an idea of him. To those of you who knew him, I am sure each of you can relate to how remarkable of a man he was. The price of love is grief, and today we grieve the loss of my dad, Kevin. My dad, Kevin, was the son of Ian and Cynthia Dixon, baby brother to Chantal and Masana, the best husband to my mom, his wife, Sherry, an idol to his children, Kevin and myself. The best grandfather to his grandson, Xavier. My dad spent his life living in the Kuva community, started off working in the family drugstore and cinema. He then proceeded to Southwest Regional Health Authority, where he spent 23 dedicated years of his life as a medical orderly. 
He married the love of his life and spent in 1991 and had a first child Kevon the following year. Seven years later, I came along, the light of their life, well I was, until I had my son and he stole the spotlight. My son Zaley is the light of everyone's life, but he was his grandfather's heartbeat. When you ask Zaley, what is your daddy name, he would quickly reply, Papa. No matter how tough of a day my dad was having, nothing was ever too much for his grandson. If it was 50 times for the days Zaley emptied toys, daddy would never hesitate to clean up each of those 50 times. Every morning he would wait for his grandson to wake up, get him ready for his milk warm and waiting. These are the joys he had with his grandson. My brother, this was funny for me. He was my, my brother was his dolly. Unconsciously, every time he asked my brother something, I would hear him calling out doll, thinking it's me, he's calling. But this time he would say it's not who I'm talking to, it's my son. This made it even more hilarious to me, just making my brother mock me. If I was upset, I couldn't be Daddy Dolly. Each morning, Daddy would ask me, how are you feeling? You want me to drop you to work today? You sure you could drive? Or hurry up, I wait until I open the gate for you. My dad was nothing outside of a family man. He lived and breathed for his family. On mornings, he had a routine set. He was programmed to wake up at the crack of dawn to get his day started. He set the table and for breakfast and brewed my grandparents' coffee. He would always hear my grandmother, Lady. It was Lady, you good? Yeah, Lady. He waited for the days to see when my grandmother cooked just to tell my grandfather, Ah, boy, look, he gained fresh food today. His joys at home was having his sisters with him. Whenever he got the news they were coming to visit from Boston, he anxiously awaited. It was the bags of the biggest chocolate from Duty Free, endless candy, pink flowers, whatever he desired. He was their baby brother and had nothing my dad couldn't ask his sisters for and he would never be denied. When my Aunt Chantal, his elder sister, visited, he longed for the days to take her to the beach because she was his companion to go in the water. While he was at work, he would call any days and ask, run away early, we go into the beach today. My aunt, my aunt Hassan and his second sister, they would always fight over the ridiculous things and it was the funniest. She found joy in annoying him by rearranging the kitchen stools just to see him arrange it back to his liking each time. The man never missed when something was out of place or placed an inch away from how it's supposed to be and don't think he would forget the exact placement because he always knew. It was his way or the highway all times. My dad never feared that. He dreamt of having his own funeral home in his own mysterious ways and he would, and we would tell him certainly not at all in this life. One day, he took his niece Brianne to the funeral home just for her amusement. She got a personal tour of the funeral home and he, she saw the joy he had. My dad accepted that and wasn't scared of it one bit. He lived a life where he's carrying a baggage of only good deeds. There isn't room for any bad. There were days I recalled my dad would go without a dollar in his pocket because he wasn't a needy man. No matter what circumstances, he would always grace everyone with a smile. You could never tell if he was having a bad day because he was a man that always figured it out. My dad had everything an exceptional person can be defined as. Full of care, hardworking, ambitious, determined, loving, courageous, and remarkable. He was the family's personal handyman. There wasn't anything my dad could fix or challenge to fix on Sundays while getting the yard clean. As fast as the landscapers were cutting grass, you would see him right behind weeding up the flower bed, pulling vines that were missed. He was the landscaper as well. No one could ever say my dad could keep quiet. He was always on the go. As fast as the leaves blew from the tree, it wouldn't make two seconds later the leaf blower started and there he goes. No doubt, he swept the yard more than 10 times for the day. He spent the first half of his day with his animals outside because they were his joy. 
and the other half either sleeping, making popcorn for his grandson, or just spending time with my mom. Sunday morning, bright and early, as my mom got up, he wouldn't greet her with her normal good morning. It was, babe, you want me buy chicken or pork to cook? You'll find him in the kitchen with her grinding, seasoning, washing wares, emptying the pot, or cleaning up after. My father's favorite food was anything made by my mom. Well, besides KFC, but it was his wife's food for him. My father was nothing less than an exceptional person. He was the greatest of everything he did. He helped those in need. Every time he was asked, and even the times he wasn't directly asked, he still volunteered himself to assist anyone he could have. His family was his life. I don't even believe he knew what life was like outside of us. Daddy, what are our weekend drives going to be like without you? Sitting in the living room, making us all watch reruns of CSI or NCIS, watching you fall asleep propped up on the couch. As big as I am, you took me to doctor visits from my hand and never left my side. You left a boy, no one can fill that. Everything I do will always remind me of you, whether it's washing clothes or sitting outside the little things. Come on, and I, we promise we will try our best to pick up where you left off and walk in the big shoes you left to be filled. Today makes it one week since you departed this world, and life has certainly changed. My mom, she lost both her parents, and she always said, one day you and your brother pray you never have to experience the pain of losing a parent, and well, daddy boy, that pain is certainly an unbearable one. We can all relate to the hurt my mom experienced. Life isn't going to be the easy days, are going to be hard as a passerby without you. But like baby says, Papa, go on to work for Jesus now. And I know you'll be our guardian angel watching over us each day. Love you always, Daddy. Until we meet again, my King, rest peace. Rest in peace, my angel. The security has asked that the following owners attend to their people. TDB 741, TDB 741, TDK 1347, TDK 1347, PCZ 4363 PCC 4363 Let's pray. I invite you to stand. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon him. Almighty God and Father of all, you strengthen us by the mystery of the cross and with the sacrament of your Son's resurrection. Have mercy on our brother Kevin Anthony. Forgive all his sins and grant him peace. May we who mourn the sudden death he be comforted and consoled by your power and protection. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sit and listen to the words of sacred scripture.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Untarnished life, this is ripe old age. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honorable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding this is man's great peers. Untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding of treachery, seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade. And the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life, his soul being pleasing to the Lord. He has taken him quickly from the wickedness around him, yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection his holy ones. This is the word of the Lord.
sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. I read for you from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachani, which means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling on Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died and he said, in truth, this man was a son of God. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices with which to go and anoint him. And very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb just as the sun was rising. They had been saying to one another, who will roll the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked, they could see that the stone, which was very big, had already been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man in white robe seated on the right hand side and they were struck with amazement but he said to them there's no need for alarm you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified he has risen he is not here see here is the place where they laid him the good news, the gospel of the Lord. So let's sit for a moment. Let me first express on my own behalf and on behalf of our parish community here of St. Paul, let me express our sincere and deepest condolences to you, the family and friends of Kevin. Also say thanks to Guides, David Guides and Sons for undertaking the, to do the, what they, we call on them and they, we need them to do for us in these times of death and for the live stream. We thank you for your service to us as well. As we listen to the gospel reading of the day, we are reminded of Jesus' own death. And later we are also reminded of his resurrection. Jesus himself felt a little bit in, in the pain of the moment. He felt that God himself had forsaken him. But he knew that was, he had come for that purpose, the earth, so that sinners may be saved. And with his presence with us here on the crucifix that reminds us of his own death, remember that 
in spite of the, the pain and the suffering of the cross, he had said it to, to us before. He had said that he would lay down his life for us. And Jesus keeps his promise. He said he would lay down his life for us. He went up to Calvary and there he laid his life on the wood of the cross so that the power of redemption or salvation will flow from that cross where he nailed up the sins of human beings. As difficult as that was, he was prepared to do it for us. And in that moment, the centurion who was there recognized Jesus not as a son of God, but as a son of God, like Kevin has been. He has been for us a son of God. And while Jesus died for us on that cross, remembering the sins of human beings, we know Kevin, in a moment of weakness, succumbed to the evil one. But Jesus, as we learned later in the, the gospel, he had also promised us not only that he will lay down his life for us, but that he will be raised up. He will raised up to be with his Father in heaven. And when the ladies went to on the Sabbath day, like we do today, because the burying of the dead for us is one of our corporal mercies, and we we need to do that for our our brother. Kevin, at this time, we, we bring honor to the dead for all the things that we would have heard in the, the eulogy that said about all of, of his goodness and all that he had been for us. Well, Jesus did not allow the tomb to enclose him. He was able as we listened, no one had to move the, the, the stone away from the tomb because he was a God, not a son of God alone, but the son of God who was able to break through the imprisonment of the tomb and to rise again. And as the, the, the man in the, with that amazed the ladies with what he said. He said that he had promised, he said that they will crucify him, but that he will be risen so that we will believe again in the power of God and in the power of the resurrection. If it had ended only with that symbol of his crucifixion, we as a people will have little or no hope. But God, in his mercy, raised Jesus after the pain and suffering that Jesus went through. The pain and suffering that allows us to see the extent of God's love for us. And in that love, God raised Jesus and all of us, all of us are called to live our lives in such a way that when we die, we will be ready to be with God. I know that for all of us gathered here today, it's a really a painful time for us. I'm sure that each one of us shared our pain in a different way. I myself, when I heard of his death, I myself felt that pain. And when we feel that pain, we have to go back to God. We have to continue to trust in God. We have to continue to believe in God in spite of what has happened. We have to raise our prayers as we do today. We will continue to do that to raise our praise to Almighty God 
so that Kevin will have the hope of everlasting life. We as the people who, are, who are, he has left behind, that's what we can do for him. We could continue, I, mean, I'm so, I suppose you, ever since his death a week ago, you would have been praying for his soul. And we pray for ourselves too, because each one of us, in our moment of grief, we, we need the comfort of God's hands. And as the first reading reminded us that God's grace and mercy is greater than any sin. And, uh, and by God's grace and mercy, we must have hope. We must have hope and the hope of comforting each other. We will want to question ourselves why it had to be, why it ended like this. We might feel the anxiousness of the moment, but we have to accept that this is what has happened. But by all we would have liked to hold on to him and keep him. We have to let go of him to allow him to be with God. And I must remind you too, just as we call on the church today to be with you in this ceremony of, of the funeral and the burial, that whenever you need the church, the church will always be there for you. And while, as I mentioned earlier, we may question, the thing is, we have to accept, we have to accept what has happened and we have to get the best of it. We have to continue to live by his own virtues, all the things that he taught us. We have to continue to bring that in our lives at this time and into the future. That all those good things that we learned about in the eulogy, and of course I learned it, but you as his family and friends know it even better than I do, that we have to continue to live those things that he embraced and which he, he gave to us as a member of our family, as a, mem a member of our friendship. We need to embrace that and uh, to lift that up through the way we live our lives so that when our turn will come, because surely our turn of death will come at some point in time, that God will be ready to be with God. God tells us that we must worship Him and we must take care of our fellow brothers and sisters in order to inherit eternal life. And as we pray, uh, I always remind myself at funerals too, you know, that we never know when that day will come for us. But I will finish this. This funeral service is in the hands of God. Whether I will make it through today or tomorrow, that's in the hands of God. Whether he will give me many more years, I don't know. But what I know is that when that time comes, I must be ready, and all of us, we must be ready for when that time comes. All that we know is that we have had a past, and we have the present moment in which we live. And we make, we make that a moment, a holy moment of glorifying God. What will be in the future? will be. At present, we give to God the best that we can. As we give to Kevin, I'm sure in your hearts, you give to him today the best that you could give to him. But I want to remind you that you must not hold yourself in pain for what has happened. If you had known what was about to happen, I'm sure the church knew as well we would have done something that that would have ended up differently. But 
this is a reality and we must be ready as they, we learn from our gospel reading that there is always evil moments weakness in a moment one moment of weakness and uh, God himself understand that weakness Jesus himself cried out to God my God my God why have you forsaken me he knew that was the purpose that he had come to earth for but yet in that moment he cried to God and often we might be like that and we may feel that God had, has forsaken us but God is always with us we live by faith we live by trusting in God and trusting in the power of God's grace and his mercy as the first re reading from wisdom taught us today and uh, while we lived in that trust we remind ourselves that each one of us will have to depend on each other and to support each other and to bring healing to our own passion and our own grief in the moments when we these days we will be in prayer and, and we and we may be in together for these days but remember beyond this day that if it means that you you have to call you have to whatsapp you have to send a message to each other remember do that and give each other support you yourself might be in need of the of the support but your emotions god will also understand that and god will take care of you if, for some of us the healing takes a longer time but those of us and that's not a weakness that's because of your love for kevin for some of us we will be stronger and be able to get over it earlier than others and in that strength we will be able to give to each other the support that they need today as we bid him farewell from this earth we also we also want to give him the, our prayers so that like the ladies who are amazed at the power of the resurrection we will be amazed and he will be amazed by the power of that resurrection our pascal candle next to the coffin reminds us that jesus is the light that has come down to us from heaven and has been taken back to heaven but those incense greens that you see there five incense greens reminds us that the wounds of jesus are holy by your holy wounds christ has saved us and he has given us peace my dear sisters and brothers that's the hope we have we have the hope of your everlasting life and we grasp that in our hands and we embrace it today remember how he loved us
dear family and friends remember that love and let's continue to live in that love glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning it's now and ever shall be world without end amen another call for a driver um, someone wants to leave and and you are your vehicle is in the way so i suppose the security will guide you as to how you will go about keeping your path vehicle pdc 8001 pdc 8001 thank you I invite you to stand as we do these prayers of intercession. Lord, the Almighty Father raised Christ, His Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask Him to save all His people, living and dead. Your response when I say, Lord, hear us, will be, Lord, graciously hear us. For Kevin Anthony, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. That those who bear the cross of pain in mind and body may never feel forsaken by God. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. That God may deliver the soul of his servant Kevin Anthony from punishment and from the powers of darkness. Lord, hear us. That God in his mercy may blot out all his offenses. Lord, hear us. That God may establish in light and peace that God may establish him in light and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. That God may call him to happiness in the company of all the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. That God may welcome into his glory those of our family and friends. Let me just. And we pray for the deceased members of our family and we ask God to be merciful to them as well and we have a few deceased ones here on our program Hassan Ali and Izan we pray that God as we lift up Kevin to you we lift them up as as well and all other friends and family members who have the departed this life. Lord, hear us. That God may give a place in the kingdom of heaven to all the faithful departed. Lord, hear us. We pray for ourselves, Lord, and our own journey that we will always be mindful of the what lies ahead of us, that we will prepare ourselves well by our worship, our care of Brothers and sisters of ours, the both in the in biologically and in the company of of all we, we meet from day to day, we pray, dear Lord, that we will do well and be able to endure the hardships at times, the sufferings at times, 
to enjoy the, the, the grief of this moment and uh, also their God to inherit eternal radiance. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are dying at this very moment, dear God, that your grace and your mercy will be with them and their families who would soon receive news of their death. We pray that you will bring them to eternal life. Lord, hear us. We pray, dear God, in thanksgiving for the technology and for those who do the live streams for us. We pray, dear God, for this company that you will bless them, that they will be professional in what they do, and that all that they do will be for your greater glory. Lord, hear us. For David Guides and, the, and his son Funeral Agency, we pray, dear God, we thank you for, for they being there for us in times of death. We pray, dear God, that as they, we come to them usually first, dear God, that they will give comfort to those who have lost family members and uh, that their professionalism will continue to be embraced. Lord, hear us. For all of us who have gathered here in this physical building and those who have gathered with us on the live stream, dear God, we, we thank you for the support we give to each other and we pray for your healing grace upon us. Help us, dear God, to accept what we cannot now change, but to pray for the glory that lies ahead of us and lies ahead of heaven. Lord, hear us. We lift up all our prayers, remembering that Mary, the mother that Jesus gave to the church while he hung on the cross, is our mother and she's there like she was to receive Jesus' limp body from the cross. We pray that she will intercede for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It's the month of the Sacred Heart, Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and we are for death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. For for what we beseech thee, O Lord, I grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross 
be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, creator and redeemer of all the faithful, grant to the souls of your departed servants release from all their sins. Hear our prayers for those who love and give them the pardon they have always desired. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal life grant unto Kevin Anthony, O Lord. May he rest in peace. The Angelus reminds us of the Jesus' coming into the world. For Kevin, it's a new beginning, new life in a new place. We give him back to God. St. Paul, pray for us. Right, so we have a, so we miss it now. We have a special call again for our driver. Someone has an emergency to leave, so they are kindly asking that you assist them by attending to the movement of your car. PEC 9516, PEC 9516. And like the, the security guard will guide you as to how you will park after. Right, so the family has asked that we take up a collection for the church, and so we'll do that now.
Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your Eucharistic presence here on our table of sacrifice. Lord, you have called us so many to partake of one bread and form one holy people. Send your Holy Spirit to unite us in mutual love and respect. As we worship you within our different communities, we pray that your church, gathered in Jesus' name, anointed with the one spirit and sharing the one Eucharistic bread, may grow ever more obedient in faith after the example of the Virgin Mary, our mother, Mary most holy. Make us into bread for your kingdom, a sign and effective instrument of peace and unity in this region. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus was praying one day and his disciples saw him and they asked him to teach them to pray. He said, well, the first thing we remember is that we are brothers and sisters of each other and that we are brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. And so we have the privilege of addressing God as Father. Let's stand as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Let us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Deliver our families from all evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, rather look upon our faith. Look upon the feet of your sons and daughters gathered here this week, today. And look upon the feet of your entire church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. My dear sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. And I, we have a lay minister with us to assist me with the distribution of Holy Communion. If you come forward. I think I'll have to take sister from the choir if we have no other minister. Eucharistic minister, but yeah. Yeah. the sister is there. My dear sisters and brothers. This is Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, who went up to Calvary 
and nailed our sins on the cross. Jesus Christ is risen from the tomb. He is Lord and he is risen from the tomb. I didn't tell the, the choir, but let's sing that. He is Lord and he is risen.
let us let us pray lord god whose son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey mercifully mercifully grant that strengthened by it our brother kevin anthony may come to the eternal table of christ who lives and reigns forever and ever amen um the the those who will sprinkle for me if you will gather around the coffin now we'll do a prayer for the family and then i will sprinkle and and uh, and then as i mentioned earlier we'll pass the bottle to you to sprinkle so we may sit for this prayer and those who are sprinkling it will come around You just come and stand on the side. Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you pursue us with untiring love and dispel the shadow of death with the bright dawn of life. Comfort your family in their loss and sorrow. Be their refuge and their strength, O Lord. And lift them from the depths of grief into the peace and light of your presence. Your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, by dying has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Enable us, therefore, to press on toward Him, so that after our earthly course is run, we may reunite. You may reunite us with those we love, when every tear will be wiped away. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen.
I kiss my son. I wish him a hug him. And I kiss him goodbye Saturday night. Said, darling, be good, eh? We coming back just now. And we went inside and I'm looking for him and I'm looking all about the sea. I mean, I'm looking at corner by the corner. I what? see cats and I'm like, 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 I'
together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. We ask you, dear Father, to bless this final resting place for Kevin Anthony, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. He also guard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, become a free. And the Lord Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast down the devil, Satan, and Holy Spirit. Let's go to the world, seeking the reign of the Amen. Angel of God, my guardian, here. God's love permits me here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>
plate.
I just stay 